Hey everybody, I'm Tom Basso and welcome to 10,000 and Below, where we go and look at games on BoardGameGeek that are ranked quite, quite low and see why some of them are great, some of them are horrifyingly bad, and some of them I'm looking at for the first time. So let's get started. Today we're at 13,701, and the first game here I've actually played, Jungle Race, and I've given it a 7. See? It's a simple little game. It is a, it's a game based for kids from Cranio Creations where there's just a bunch of racers in a row. You can see them right here, and you're playing cards to move them back and forth. Kids like that sort of thing. You secretly want some of them to do better than other ones. You know, it's uh, keeping the cards in your hand. It's a nice little game, mostly for kids, but adults could play it too. All right, let's continue down. Well, this game has 125 ratings. Blood Berets and then Party and Co. Original. Well, Blood Berets, I'm going to guess, is a war game. No. Oh, Mutant Chronicles Blood Berets. I see. This is a... Uh, I'm, I'm having some flashback. I'm thinking I might have said this before. I would not have guessed. Oh, I see. They're wearing red berets. And there's Arnold Schwarzenegger attacking a demon. Alrighty. Cool. Alright, Party and Co. Original. Hmm. With all the fun of Party and Co. games in five categories. Charades, taboo, trivia, lip reading, and drawing. What's taboo? Are they like actually copying the game taboo? I don't I think wouldn't that be like a trademark? I like those funky uh gramophone pieces. Huh. All right, moving on, continuing down. Nile from 1967, Zumaka. And Back to the Future, out of time. All right, Nile. Outscore him through skillful playmate style to get a line across the board. That's an old looking game, right? But. I don't necessarily hate the idea of it. This this board here, these look like these wooden blocks look cool. I mean, very generic. That's interesting. Zumaka, not a very good game. I like this this company now, World Shapers. They uh, oh no, it's not World Shapers. Sorry, this is the only game they made. I did it. This is like uh, building a zoo, and there's so many take that cards in this game. The cards are kind of cool looking. So many take that cards in this game. You might as well not even collect what you're trying to collect. It's just not worth it. Back to the Future, out of time. This is a dice game from Daryl Andrews IDW. A pressure luck racing game. But if I recall correctly, it did not get, it's mostly just a mediocre, small, light dice rolling game with the, that theme thrown on top of it. Avanti Mare. Um, what's the East is Red, the Sino Soviet War, that's from 1974, and then Fagin's Gang from 2007. All right, so first we have this one here. Oh, it's a kids' game. I like how this one looks. You're moving the river down. I like that. That's a cute little board. I think kids would enjoy that one. It's from Select the Spielzug. They make some nice kids' games. This is definitely another war game by Jim Dunnigan. I think I'm talking about Jim Dunnigan more than anyone else in this series. He certainly has designed a lot of games down here. The East is Red. That's kind of a cool title, right? The East is Red. Also another magazine game. Fagin's Gang. Man, I really want to like this game. I remember when it came out. When it came out, I looked at this. And while this might not look fantastic today in 2020 when I'm recording this, back in 2007, this was a pretty cool-looking game. And I was excited with the theme. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, it, it did win the best new British board game. And, uh, but there was, there was just too many problems with the game. You're an infamous... Thing. Let me see what I said about it, because I actually wrote the review back then. It's the long time and occasional rep repetitiveness of the game kept me from playing it more often. Um, it says that there's this, the strategy is kind of a linear path. But basically, I think I said that was just too long of a game. 
Uh, I said it's the theme is thin, lasts too long. Sometimes I feel like we're doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, and if I said that back, the 2007 Vassal said that, 2020 Vassal would have even less patience with it. I really love that theme, though. Circus Grandioso, I also gave this one a five. Uh, Circus Grandioso, this is from Forian Racky from Racky Spiel. You are putting cards on top of each other. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It's like a kid-style game, just too random. Cranium Hullabaloo. This one has 229 ratings. High energy. Kids listen to a bounce, twist, spin, high five, and dance to the music, sounds, and friendly voice of Hullabaloo. Is that a device that's in the thing? Oh, Hullabaloo sounds like a jerk. <laughs> probably not, but I can see how adults would find that annoying. This is probably great for kids, but it came out 17 years ago. Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty's Web. That's a cool name. Wannabe Football. I'm going to look at that one, too. And then here's one that has, oh, I want to look at Laser Attack and Connections. I keep getting distracted by games here. Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty's Web. This is, a co it's a cooperative crime-based game. Not any reviews on this one. I feel like, at this point in time, that... I'm, Z Garcia may have played this one and told me that the rules weren't very well done. Because I remember looking at this and thinking how cool it looks. It really does look good, right? But it's really low down there. Wannabe football. What a weird cover. A fast-paced football card game. Is the wannabe football the fact that you want to be a football player? <laughs> okay, fine. All right. Laser attack. Your mission is to destroy them. Get energy pods. Is there an actual laser in this game? That definitely has a look of like an 80s game to it. No, it's a fake laser. It's just a light. Ah. All right, connections. You just got to place your things, form lines and boxes. Okay, looks nice. 51,000 possible ways to win for ages 6 years to 106. It's like, what does that even mean? If, if you're 106, I don't think you could stop playing games when you're 107. Seen it, 007. Man, there's a lot of seen it. Sail away, sail away, sail away. And then Ossel Schlamassel. Alrighty, there's not a lot I can say about Seen It, a special edition of Seen It, but James Bondish. Came out in 2004, so it's going to miss some of the modern Bonds. Sail Away, didn't I play this game? No, Z did. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it looks cool enough. I like the plastic pieces. Those pirates are having a good old time there, stacking on crates. I remember seeing this one at... Spiel. I remember being at that exact spot. Ah, looks fun, but it's really ranked low. Also, Sholmassel. Woodlouse Chaos, or Lice Shower. Uh, let's take a look at the board here. Ah, it uses that same artwork from the Cockroach Poker. Are you guys going to show me the actual game? Alrighty. Dry Magier, they make some great kids' games, so I don't know. That one seems like it would be fun to play. Uh, Labyrinth, The Paths of Destiny. Fluffy Bunny Tea Party. I got to take a look at that one. Moving down. Pokemon Trading Figure Game. I didn't know such a thing existed. Flunkern. That's what I got in school. Flunkern. Labyrinth, The Paths of Destiny. Let's take a look. That's a boring box. Yeah, it just doesn't look very polished, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't look bad per se, but it looks like an indie publishing game from Let's Play Games. Hmm. All right, well, let's take a look at Fluffy Bunny Tea Party. This is from Gizmet Gameworks. Serve dessert from Trey. Oh, I didn't, no one told me this was about desserts. I want a rhubarb tart and a lemon tart and a cherry tart. I just want a tart and an apple tart. Now, I want a rhubarb, lemon, or cherry. Serve dessert from hand. 
All right, Pokemon trading figure game. Did, did y'all know this was a thing? I didn't know there was Pokemon figures, although it does make sense, right? This must not have done very well at all because it was in and out. I wonder if these are like rare to even find these. Let's see what the comments of people saying about it. Simple to play some basic strategy. The figures are the best looking I've seen in any game. Shame it was canceled. Hero clicks esque. Huh. Wow, that's weird. That'd be my man. I would like to find these. I think my kids would like them. Flunkern from Ravenspiel. I like the art on these cards a lot. That's pretty cool. These veggies. So this is a game that did not come out in English for sure. There's three to six players, 86 numbered cards. Huh. I would try, I would try this. All right, let's see. All hands on deck, Undermine, Undermine, Super Comics. We'll take a look at that one. And then zoom down, that's it. All right, Undermine, a worker resource management, a worker placement game. Okay, fine, but, oh, and you need a set for every two players? No, nah, it's a bad idea. That's so generic looking. I get what they're going for, but you gotta have a draw to the game. Super Comics, let's take a look at that picture. <laughs> what are they, they're having a thumb war? And you're doing different challenges. You mix your cards, draw one, and try to achieve the challenge. Oh, that sounds awful. That's a cooler looking cover from Scorpion Mask. That's it. Just the right party game. Quick, name something you find in a toolbox. Draw a topic card. And then race a shout of answers until someone says the exact word written. Yeah, that's right. That's it. It was an okay idea. You just shout out a word. <laughs> that's fine. All right. Battlestar Galactica collectible card game. Wow, that brings back memories. We'll also take a look here at Millie Grazier. And now a whole bunch of games in a row that I've rated. Although only one of them I've rated well. All right, let's, here we go. Battlestar Galactic Collectible Card Game. This was from WizKids. This came out in 2006. Uses screen captures. And the cards are shaped as if they were made in Battlestar Galactic. That must have been a real pain for the people cutting the cards, though. This person got them signed. Yeah, these are definitely just uh, either screen caps or press images. I don't know if the game's any good. Who's the designer? Hmm, a bunch of them. Yeah, this is one of those many, many C CCGs that came out. All right, Millie Grezzi. Dirk Hillebrecht, what else has he done? Just a game called Wonderland. All right. Get him up and hand over the dough. Get him up and hand over the dough. That is, uh, sounds like a translated. Wow. The box cover is fine. It, you know, shows the gentleman, but that board looks very boring. Mm. All right, here we go. Games that I play now. Volpforsten. Uh, in this game, you have these different dice, and depending on what you roll, you're grabbing something here. So you might be grabbing the dice with the highest number, but maybe you're not. The, you don't use all the dice. You just There's one die that tells you what thing to grab. Then you add another die, and that says you can only use your left hand or whatever. It has, like, restrictions. And the more dice you add, the more things. I might have to clap first, then grab it, stuff like that. Yeah, it's okay. It works well for kids. It's really funny for kids, which is where it gets a seven. But for adults, it's, it's okay. Abracazam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a game in which you are essentially using a wand to make these shapes here, and people have to figure out which one you're making. It's more difficult than it sounds. Gumball Rally. I really like how this one looks, but it's just... It's a repositioning game, but it's not as good as many of the other ones are there. The cards, these are super generic looking cards. 
Blindside. Uh, when did I review Blindside? 2012. Uh, it's a pure strategy. You're trying to capture your opponent's movement arrows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It, it, the idea of the arrows moving around capturing stuff is pretty cool. The deck of dice, it's literally what it says. It's 36 cards, uh, and you can stick it in Settlers of Catan for a deck of dice, or they give you some games to play with it. If you're going to make something like this, make it look nicer than this. Of course, I, I, put, I said it back in 2011. I, again, I would be meaner today. Lunte. Rainbow Knights, I gave an 8 to. And Booze Barons, I gave a 5.5 to. So let's take a look at those three games. This is a game about blowing uh, a bomb blowing up. Uh, this is a good game, I think, to pick the, the, a start player of a game. It's just an entertaining game with this fuse going here, and you're just trying to make it so the fuse explodes on these different bombs that are going off, and you're subtracting or adding to them. I, I was actually very, very entertained by this game. Rainbow Knights, fantastic game. It There's no pictures here? Well, that's weird. Yeah, well, you watch my review. I show you how it plays in a review. It has clear cards, and you're like, it's like Tron, and you're flying these unicorns around trying to make other people so they can't move. It's really fun. Booze Barons. Uh, identity and set collection game. This is from Overworld Games. I like their, some Overworld Games, but this one was just, there was too much. Oh, I figured out who everybody was too early in, in the game, and it just, it didn't feel like a deduction game at all. Dice Masters, no, Dice Master, City of Doom. And then this one, Architect Dun, has 986 rankings. That is a lot to be this far down. Animal Olympics, we'll take a look at. Castellers. Oh, I know that one. Cranium the Family Fun Game. When Dragons Fight. And then the last one on the list today, Hand Offs Hurts. Hands Off Hurts. Dice Master, Cities of Doom. This game came out in 1996. A starter set for Dice Master Collectible Dice Game. Collectible Dice Game, this is like one of those ones that was probably before its time. It looks like it's based on Dragon Dice a little bit. That box is not doing it any wonders. Architect Now this one's surprising me. It's Michael Shocked. Queen Games. It probably has reviews. Why is it ranked so low? We gotta look at the ratings. See, wow, there's a, that's a lot of five ratings, fours and threes. And a good chunk of, there's only three people who've ranked as a 10. It wasn't great, not terrible either. I take that abstract for two. Mm. Animal Olympics. I like that box cover. Think hard, think fast, shoes wrong, be last. <laughs> That's my new motto. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the pictures on this one. That's entertaining. What is that zebra? That guy's running in style. <laughs> All righty, Castellers. Yeah, this is a game from DeVere about stacking. And you're stacking uh, up to, you have these wooden pieces and you're stacking them. I've always wanted to see like the actual thing been done here. This game was okay. Cranium family fun game. It's Cranium. It's for families. It's going to get very mixed reviews on Board Game Geek. I'm not a big fan of Cranium, but I could see that my kids would like it. When Dragons Fight. This is from 2001, and it is a war game. Look at that. I would not have thought of this from the name. That is a war game map for sure. It looks like they're in Taiwan, actually. Taibomba XTR Corporation. Oh, it is Taiwan. Well, go figure. Oh, it has nothing to do with dragons. It's just about it's just about um, the uh, Taiwan being invaded by People's Republic of China. The dragons thing is just a, a name for it. Okay, that makes more sense now. I guess I shouldn't have been so surprised. And then hands off hearts. Is that hands over hearts? It's an interactive party game. Using gameplay similar to trigger. Player picks true or false. One reads a question, everyone puts it in, and you have to guess whether questions are true or false. It was recommended for the Spiel des Jahres game of the year, but it probably never came out in English, so we'll never know. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that 
We've made it to the end of another um, 10,000 and below. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's games that you wanted me to talk about and didn't, mention them in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.